Hello, Morton Rustad here from Rustad Media. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Photoshop to edit time lapses. Usually, people use Lightroom to edit time lapse footage, and with a good reason, it's a, you know, a great application, especially together with LR time lapse, but it doesn't always give you uh, the tools and flexibility that you know from editing still photos in Photoshop. Many people does not know that you can actually use Photoshop to edit time lapses alone and I'm going to show you how in this video. You can use Photoshop only to edit your footage but I usually use it as an addition uh, to Lightroom and LR time lapse. So I exported the sequence after editing it in Lightroom. I exported uh, to JPEGs because the changes I'm going to do in Photoshop are small and you know, it doesn't require a lot of the image in terms of information. But if you're doing big changes like shadows and highlights, you might consider to export as uh, TIFFs. Anyways, I have my images here in this folder, 257 images. So what I'm going to do first is to open one of my images in Photoshop. Then I'm going to do the adjustments and then apply those adjustments to all the other images in the folder. I'll first choose a representative image here. Usually I pick one in the middle and this will uh, work okay. The way we're going to do this is with the actions function in Photoshop. This is a way to record every step you do within the application. So click here uh, to bring this box up or if you don't have it, go up here. Create a new folder. I'll name it time lapse and create a new action within the folder and name it wherever you like. I'll call it Segla. Segla is, by the way, the name of the mountain right here. You'll see that this uh, dot is red, so that means that you are recording every step you're doing. For example, if I duplicate this layer, it will show up here. So you can stop and delete the sections you don't want at any time. One important note, you might experience that some of your tools are not recorded like the brush, eraser or dodge and burn. Like you see if I paint with my brush here, it's not recorded. Then what you have to do is to go up here and check for allow to recording. And if you see now, it's recorded. So that will solve that problem if you run into that. So I'll start editing the image here and I'll start by adding a plugin filter that I like, a Nick software color effect. I think this gives a nice contrast to the image. Put this around 50 and click OK. Also darken the sky a little bit here by adding a curves layer and darkening. I'm going to choose a black gradient and masking out the bottom part because I only want the sky to be darker. We can stop recording and uncheck the adjustment layer, see the effect. You can probably do this gradient more easily in Lightroom. It's just to show some different methods within Photoshop. Now I'm done editing the photo, so we'll go to the savings part here. And a problem will occur. I want to edit as a JPEG, but as you see, the Photoshop won't allow me to uncheck the as a copy box and copy will be added to the name here. Well, I don't want that. And the solution is to flatten your image. I like to just create a new layer and then flatten. The reason uh, that I create a new layer first is because sometimes if you want to use this action on another sequence that is already just having one layer, you will get an error message because you can't flatten an image that is just one layer. So always try to make your actions as general and non-specific as possible to avoid error messages. Now that the image is flattened, uh, we can go up and save again. 
and notice that we don't have the naming issue anymore. I'll create a new folder here for the Photoshop export and save. Now close your image and then stop the recording. Now it's time to apply the action to all the other images in the sequence as well. So click File, Automate, Batch. Find your right action and choose the folder where your original sequence is. In my case, it's my Lightroom export. These settings you can leave like this since we already took care of the saving and closing directly within uh, the action. Click OK and Photoshop will start doing its job. I have this filter which takes a bit of time and if you do stuff like blurs, noise reduction, sharpening, it might take a while as well. But it's usually quite quick, especially if you're just doing some adjustment layers. So Photoshop is finished uh, doing its uh, job. So we can close out uh, Photoshop. Um, here we can see the finished uh, photos. So now you can do whatever you want with these images. You can take them into an app such as uh, QuickTime 7 and just turn it into a, a movie file. Or like I usually do bring up my project here in Premiere and uh, import it uh, as an image sequence. Um, and drag it on to your project. Uh, I edit full size uh, always until until I get into uh, Premiere. Uh, so I have the flexibility of resizing it here. So now it's finished uh, and you can render it out. Thanks for uh, watching this uh, tutorial. I hope you learned something and uh, make sure to check out my final project. I'm working on a pretty big project. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below.